Good afternoon. I thought of a way to scare the people in the back row. This is a, an interactive session. <laughs> um, I uh, used to be a scientist, and Phil Breeze was encouraging me to um, continue that behavior, but I got a little distracted by some of these planning issues like what to do with the Park Hotel and some things about snow machines, and 12 years went by, and uh, <laughs> here I am. You know, there was this discussion this morning about an interpretation, if you have the flat hat on, you're always right, and you're the expert. The difference in planning and management, especially in the public arena, is that you're always wrong. <laughs> so, um, I have some questions, really more questions than answers today. This, looking at this, continuing with this Cantwell ORB study, and here's what I'm going to tell you right here in these, around these three questions. First is that scientific information for management decisions is more and more important as time goes on, especially with contentious issues. Secondly, um, around the NEPA process, that there are some things about the NEPA process that, if better understood by researchers, by scientists, could uh, further improve the ability of science to inform the NEPA process. And thirdly, that um, long-term monitoring, if we can anticipate what some of the management issues of the future will be, then this the long-term monitoring is is very valuable. So this is kind of what this what what this case study illustrates for us. Um, there is there's been a lot of discussion recently about the importance of scientific information, and these uh, the quotes here. Um, I'm not going to read you my program here, but these are worth um, going through. Which is that the the need for uh, management, the feasibility of management methods, and the evaluation of results must be based upon current and continuing scientific research. Both the research and the management itself should be undertaken only by qualified personnel. And furthermore, that management based on scientific research is therefore not only desirable, but often essential. This is from 43 years ago. <coughs> And the recent discussion about conducting sound science, there was a, an editorial in uh, Science, the, the journal Science not long ago, that, that talked about how the term sound science has kind of been in, invented in recent years and gets applied most by um, an opposite side of a contentious debate so that sound science, the need for sound science is often used um, in the context of um, we don't agree with your conclusion, so you haven't yet done the sound science. So that's a whole interesting debate, but um, the, the point that, that I wish to leave the, with you this afternoon is that valid scientific information becomes more and more important the more contentious the issue is. On the, the second one about how can scientific studies better inform the, the NEPA process, and that's um, where we can look specifically at the, the case study that um, Cantwell ORB uh, used for subsistence access. And um, Rob's already kind of introduced you to what this is, the traditional use area um, part here in the, uh, the south side of Denali, southwest of Cantwell. And the particular issue here this is like widescreen format, but this is cool. Um, anyway, the, the specific issue was looking at this traditional use area and which trails, which ORB access trails were we going to leave open. This is the, the temporary closure. So the management issue and the alternatives in the environmental assessment are constructed around different scenarios for um, allowing ORV access for subsistence use on in different parts of this traditional use area. So as we, and, and the ANILCA um, requirement here from uh, section 11, uh, 811B is that the secretary shall permit appropriate use for subsistence purposes of snowmobiles, motorboats, and other means of surface transportation traditionally employed 
for such purposes by local residents and subject to reasonable regulation. And so the management action in this case is the reasonable regulation. What do we do for the long term to protect the area from resource damage? And some of the examples you've seen, um, you've seen similar slides um, from Rob, but the, the rutting that's, that's going on um, by multiple passes, some things like this where trail rutting and further erosion. And then the, the documentation, the study that's been done, lots of inventory in the last couple of years, and we have, as a result of this, the very specific information um, that, that Rob just showed you on where the impacts are. So we know that we have the data layers from the, the park um, vegetation mapping, we have lots of good information. So what's the problem if we have all this background information um, collected in the last couple of years? What are the limitations? And one of them is if you look at what NEPA requires for conducting environmental assessments and for doing determinations of, of what the level of impact is, the significance of impacts. So NEPA requirements here um, Look at the, the first and third ones of these for a minute. And first is um, using an interdisciplinary approach. So natural and social sciences, nobody gets left out. The geographers get to be part of it and everything. Um, the uh, third one is document documenting incomplete or unavailable information. So you don't necessarily have to go gather all of the information that there is. Um, but you have to you have to say you have to explain the cases in which you didn't have ad adequate or, or um, thorough information. Um, but if we if we focus on the the middle one for a minute, um, significance of impacts, those kinds of conclusions in an environmental assessment or an environmental impact statement are based on the context, intensity, and duration. And so in this particular study. Um, and the reason I'm telling you this is because scientific information that provides insight into these factors is highly valuable for being able to do any kind of environmental assessment. And the, the definitions that we have, if we look first at, at context, that was defined, um, there is common, important, and unique. And in this, in this particular uh, Cantwell uh, issue, common was determined as a, a resource that's not specifically identified in the enabling legislation. Um, it is not rare or either within or outside the park, so it would be something pretty widespread in the area. Versus at the other end of the spectrum, you'd have a unique um, resource, which is something specifically identified in the ena enabling legislation, um, and the portion of the resource affected uniquely fills a role uh, within the park or um, or its region of the park, so so that's the the context part of it. The uh, intensity, the definitions used here: low, medium, and high intensity. So for the significance of impacts again, so that a low intensity impact would be when uh, a change in resource condition is perceptible but does not noticeably alter the resources function in the park's ecosystem. And then there's medium and then high intensity would be a, a resource condition. The impact is measurable, observable, and an alteration to the resources function in the park's ecosystem. Um, cultural context or visitor experience is clearly and consistently observable. And then finally duration, whether um, the impacts persist over a single season as a, a temporary, um, temporary impact versus long-term or permanent, where uh, permanent, of course, is that it's a, uh, an irreversible um, change, a permanent change in, in resources. And then beyond that, you get to the level of impairment. But understanding, uh, for, for scientific information, understanding that this is the, the way that um, environmental assessments have to disclose the level of impact to the public. Um, that's that's where we can we can improve our ability to collect information that's specifically useful for this. And then the um, 
some of the specific things that, that came up, challenges and, and issues that came up with the Cantwell um, study in particular. The, the first one here, changing assumptions. So as we propose different types of management actions, the, the assumptions about what types of vehicles would go where um, were, were changing somewhat. That, that presents a bit of a challenge for research that's been done a couple years ago. Um, in addition to the, just the simple idea that the number of assumptions um, overall um, are usually kind of beyond the comfort zone of um, a lot of scientists, and that's um, you know a compliment. That's how it ought to be. Um, some of us are probably willing to work with you know sort of conjecture a little more than others. But um, what we need to do with environmental assessment is to be able to get to the place where we're doing more you know inform inform conclusions based on long term monitoring than um, sort of educated conjecture. So that's that's the idea. Um, the, the second one, um, inventory of conditions in 2005, um, the limitation there is that we, we knew what the impacts were, but we didn't know specifically what caused them. And fi the final one, um, the value of long-term monitoring, and again here, if we could have uh, known that, well, in, in some ways we did know that this would be an issue, but to be able to have gone in and have 10 years of data like the last couple of years would um, give us a uh, wonderful ability to, to um, forecast, predict impacts now, and to, to make management decisions. So um, looking then in uh, kind of the, the conclusions here, back to the, the, three, the three main points. Um, the first one on the importance of scientific information. And again, on this one, um, my experience over the last 12 to 13 years in the planning arena is that we really need to, um, uh, the scientific information, the more, the more contentious the issue, the more important it is. Um, how they better support the NEPA process, again, understanding the idea of context, intensity, duration. And the third one on long-term management, um, 10 years of data, a lot better than, than one or two years, obviously. And finally, um, I would leave you with the idea that research should be enjoyable. Um, it's great to, uh, more rather than, than uh, just sort of look at things from a distance, though, is get out there and get dirty, as uh, Dr. Hoogie demonstrates here. Um, last weekend is a uh, field trip in Wrangell St. Elias. Um, no, actually, that's that's out, that's that's outside the park, and it's um, an area that was already that looked like that before he got there. So no worries. But um, he was testing out this tracked vehicle for its potential application in the capital. Thanks very much. We have time for one.